Hello to the Juice Guru community, Juice Guru Rewind. Uh, we're going to be going live here in a minute. Welcome to the session here. And let me just put this out on Facebook while we're at it. Okay. Are you all set, Eileen, before we start? Do you have some water and you all set to go? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm all set to go. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be fun. Let me just. <laughs> okay. I have two different communities I could broadcast to, and I'm going to just put this to a community of thousands of people that um, are eating standard American diet so we can really try to, you know, open their eyes to another way to eat on Facebook. Um, but my audience as we record for the radio is more, you know, they're eating, they're drinking juices and, you know, wanting to be healthier. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we're going to go live now on Facebook. All right, hear my cat meowing, and that means we're live here on Facebook. Hi, I'm Steve Prusak, and I'm here with Eileen Marino. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, well, we know the volume is working, so that's always a good thing with the echo there. Uh, Eileen, where are you coming in from? I'm here in uh, California. You over there in New York? Uh, yes, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Hmm. So we're coast to coast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's later here. It's almost uh, my bedtime. Oh, yeah. Here it's only four o'clock, so we haven't even had dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs> so are you all set? We're going to go live. and We're going to do a great interview. We're going to talk about Eileen's new book. It's The Colorful Kitchen. We're going to hear all about that, about her website at thecolorfulkitchen.com. Her book was just released from our friends over at Ben Bella Books, and we congratulate Eileen on the release of this book. We're going to hear about, um, you know, eating more plant-based for the holidays, staying on track, and how to add more color to your diet, and it's going to be really informative. So you're here at the right place at the right time. Thank you for being here, and if you've got questions and you're out there uh, in the community, if you're on Facebook, just type them in below as we go. Um, I'll try to sprinkle them into the interview, so just feel free to type your questions. If you're backstage, part of the Juice Guru Rewind from JuiceGuruRewind.com, just type in the chat box. You have backstage access, and you can even come on video if you like, but most of our, our people behind the scenes are shy about that, Eileen, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, that sounds great to me. Great. So how's the book tour going before we go live here with the interview for Juice Guru Radio? Fantastic. Um, we're getting into the last couple of weeks, and so it's kind of crunch time. It's a little stressful, but it's mostly amazing just to be able to be talking about food all day with people who want to know more about how to eat colorfully. And when, when was the book released? Well, it's actually not out yet. It comes out December 12th. Oh, okay. So you're in pre-order on Amazon now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, I got a drink of water and we're going to start. So thank you for tuning in. I just want to see if you guys on Facebook, if you're hearing us okay. Um, if you're here backstage in the chat room, if you can let us know that you hear us both okay. We were just doing a little small talk there, but I want to make sure the video is coming through and that you can hear everything. Now, if you're watching the replay as part of the Juice Guru Rewind uh, in the Academy, then you can type in any questions below and I'll connect with Eileen and get it answered for you. That's just one of the many benefits of being here with us and, and connecting with these amazing guests. So thank you for being here, Eileen. Really excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. How's the weather out there? Is it cold? Yeah, it's not the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, I like the summers. I like the warm weather, but it's fine. It's cozy. What do you guys have like 40 degrees now? About, yeah, about, about in the 40s, a little lower at night. Okay. All right. Well, we're, we're going to go ahead and go live. We've, we've got better weather here in California. We're a little more blessed, I guess. And we're going to start now. This episode of Juice Guru Radio is brought to you by Try Best, making healthy living easy. And our website, JuiceGuruRewind.com, where you get backstage access on your transformation to become a guru. 
Hi, I'm Steve Prusak, and welcome to Juice Guru Radio. Today, we've got Eileen Marino. She's the author of the new release, The Colorful Kitchen, coming this December from Ben Bella Books. She's going to show you how to color your holiday with plant-based versions of classic favorites and add color to your meals during the gray winter months. She's coming right up after this, so stay tuned for Eileen Marino. Hi, and welcome back to Juice Crew Radio. We've got Eileen Marino, author of the upcoming The Colorful Kitchen with Ben Bella Books. Now, she's a health coach, recipe developer, and food photographer, and she shares her plant-based recipes on her blog, The Colorful Kitchen. We'll have a link at Juice Crew Radio to her blog at thecolorfulkitchen.com. It's a beautiful website doing amazing work. Let's welcome to the show right now, Eileen Marino. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. Eileen, thank you for being here. Did I read your bio okay? It was incredible. I loved it. <laughs> you know, that was all off the top of the head. You know, I don't have it in front of me. I just, I memorize it before we go live. Amazing. So tell me, let, first of all, I read on your website, you talk about your journey to your lifestyle. And I want to start with that. You know, take us back to how you grew up and how you made this transition and what th that's done for your life. You could just share your journey with us. Absolutely. So growing up, my family had a very standard American diet. My parents weren't very big into cooking. And so we had takeout, pizza, delivery, Chinese food. Um, we would have hamburger helper, that kind of thing. And there wasn't very much of an emphasis on vegetables. My brother and I weren't interested. My parents didn't push it. And that was that. But I always sort of had a small foot in the door about wanting to be a vegetarian, just the idea of eating meat and the connection that this is, this is an animal on my plate never really felt right from the age I was nine years old to 18. I would kind of go back and forth, but it never really stuck because I wasn't interested in cooking. You know, as a kid and a teenager, I didn't really want to cook. And my parents would try and buy veggie burgers for me and the, you know, the options were very limited back then, and it just wasn't working for anyone. Well, um, take us back there, because, you know, when our parents are raising us a certain way, and all of a sudden, here's someone in the family saying, I don't want to eat this, and I'm making a connection with animals. What was that experience like for you? How did your parents react, and what did that feel like? Absolutely. So, my parents were super supportive. Um, they wanted to help me they wanted to buy food that I wanted to eat. The problem was I didn't want to eat anything. I ate French fries. I was still eating a lot of dairy. And so I was doing grilled cheese sandwiches, French fries, uh, mashed potatoes, the whatever frozen veg veggie burgers were available at the time. And, you know, back in like the late nineties, early two thousands, there weren't very many good options and there weren't, you know, there wasn't, there weren't all the blogs and the resources that parents would have today. So it just, it, they were very supportive, but it wasn't working for either of us. And I would go to the doctor, my pediatrician for my checkup, and he would tell my parents she needs to eat something other than what she's eating. She is not a healthy child. Um, on top of all of that, I had a ton. I've always, I always had digestive issues. I always had stomach aches after every meal, and I had really severe allergies. So I couldn't breathe through my nose for the first 20 years of my life, and I was on three different types of prescription allergy medications, and that was just my life. I thought that was normal. Until I was about 20 years old, I woke up one day, and I thought, I'm so, so tired of feeling sick. And I'm so tired of taking this medicine that made me so drowsy and not feeling any difference. And so I had heard about the macrobiotic diet, just this sort of urban legend about this family with an aunt who had cured herself of cancer and everyone else in the family adopted a macrobiotic diet and they were like the healthiest family in their town. And I don't even know where I heard this story, but something in it just sparked, something about the story sparked something in me. And I wanted to look into the macrobiotic diet. And so I went to the bookstore, I got a book about macrobiotics and I was a junior in college at this time. So I was also going to parties and being with my friends and food wasn't a big focus in my life, but something about it, I just felt really called to it. And I had never cooked anything with kale or quinoa. I never, I barely even cooked anything other than food that I could heat up in the microwave, but I dove in head first and 
after the first week, I was so tired of cooking. I wasn't even sure about if I liked the food, but my body was responding. And physically, I felt this lightness that I had never felt before. And so I decided to stick with it. And it was a clarity in my mind and my body just, I didn't have the stomach aches. I was starting to be able to breathe a little bit better without my allergies. And so I stuck with it. And after the first month of eating that way, I was like a new woman. <laughs> I was able to go off all of my medications because my allergies had disappeared. And that was largely linked to dairy, I later found out. And my stomach didn't hurt after each meal. And I just thought that it was normal to eat and then have stomach pain. And I was learning for the first time what it felt like to feel good in my body. And that really encouraged me to dive headfirst into all sorts of different plant-based diets. So I experimented with raw food. I was really into my dehydrator and making these meals that would take hours and hours. And then I experimented with you know, eating seasonally and eating all these different ways until I found a way that really worked for me. And what that you know, what that is, is just a whole food plant-based diet. It's not, I wouldn't categorize it as one thing or, or another. I eat when I'm craving and I eat what's in season and I feel, I eat what makes me feel good. Yeah. What a journey to get to that point. And that is really, you know, what people are finding to be an ideal way to eat. So you're eating and you experiment with these other things. You were eating lots of raw foods and things like that. So now you've done kind of a combination of all these different, just a whole food diet. Yeah. So when I was eating strictly macrobiotic, I would find myself craving something like fresh fruit, which isn't a traditional macrobiotic food to sit down and have a banana as a snack, but it would be, you know, it was the summer and it was hot out and I wanted fresh fruit and it just felt like my body was asking for it. And then I went the other direction where I thought, oh, it was the summertime and I was eating all these fresh raw foods. And then when the fall came around, I thought I'd love to have some baked tofu or, you know, and, and I realized that with the seasons, what I eat should change and I should listen to what I'm craving, craving and, you know, wanting to eat. So for those that are watching and want to integrate more healthy plant-based foods into their diet, uh, let's talk about, I mean, we've got the holidays here and they're coming and maybe depending when you're listening to the show, but what are some tips that you have that we can start integrating more of these foods into our diet? Um, absolutely. So the holidays can be a really stressful time. Holiday parties, dinners with family, uh, family members who maybe aren't on board with plant-based food. I think that can actually be the most challenging thing. Um, but I, so my biggest tip is to find a dish you like that you know your family is going to like. You don't have to tell them it's vegan or plant-based or healthy or whatever. You just serve it to them and let the food speak for itself. Um, and I guess before that, in finding something you like, I think this time of the year is amazing for roasted vegetables. So you can make a really simple roasted vegetable dish with olive oil and whatever seasonings you have. And that it's so colorful and you can serve that. Everyone will like it. You don't have to identify it as a healthy thing on the plate, but it's something that's seasonal and cozy and comfortable for the holidays. And you talk about generally during these gray winter months here, depending where you are in the United States, yeah. we're, we're kind of in that, in that period now, depending when you're hearing the show, how can we add more color to the meals and what kind of benefit is there to that? Right. So different fruits and vegetables are different colors because they contain different types of vitamins and nutrients. So instead of saying, I really need to make sure I got my vitamin A, my vitamin C, whatever, and count your count each and everything, which can drive a person crazy. When you fill your plate with a whole rainbow, I'd say a rainbow of foods, you're hitting every vitamin and nutrient and all of the things that you need. And you know that you're getting a variety because you have a different, you have different colors on your plate. And so I think just throwing in, so let's say you have, um, you make Brussels sprouts and that's like a green dish. You might want to complement that by making roasted beets or roasted carrots or something that would hit a different, a little bit of a different color palette. Um, and I think you can always throw greens into things like chop of spinach or kale, and you can kind of tuck that away into almost every dish. And that's a really great way to pump up the nutrients. What about the main course? I mean, we've just passed Thanksgiving here in the United States. And a lot of times people have grown up with that, you know, that centerpiece um, on, on the table. And what, what do you do about the main thing? Or do you recommend a bun or, you know, what do you say 
to your clients about side dishes versus a staple meal in the middle of the table? Absolutely. So something I love as a holiday centerpiece is a chickpea lentil loaf. And it's kind of similar to like a meatloaf type of thing. And it's hearty and meaty and so full of protein, but it's all plant-based. Um, you can also go the other route for, I like this for the nostalgia factor. It might not, not be the most healthful thing you could get, but there are so many types of uh, faux meat roasts that you can get like a tofurkey or, I mean, this year I've seen more faux meat products than ever. So if, if you grew up having like a turkey or a ham or, or whatnot on as the centerpiece of your table, it might feel nice to have something that kind of looks and tastes similar, but is made from plants. And so I think that's kind of a fun indulgence around the holidays also. So what about for you? Like, so are you just doing the side dish? If you, as staying as a whole food, you know, on a whole food diet, you might not want so much of the fake meats. Absolutely. Right. So Personally, I prefer to go the lentil loaf route, but I'm also, I've always been a fan of the side dishes, the roasted Brussels sprouts. I have a recipe on my website um, that I put up a couple of weeks ago. That's a roasted butternut squash that's stuffed with roasted beets and apples and Brussels sprouts. And I think that makes a really lovely centerpiece because it's so full of color and it's something that you could have in the center of the table that'll be so visually appealing before you even sit down for the meal. And where do we get that chickpea lentil loaf recipe? Is that in the book or is that on your website? So that one, I, when you pre-order my book, you can get my holiday ebook for free. And so that's in the Christmas section of my holiday ebook. And on my website, you can find the link once you pre-order the book to get the ebook for free. Oh, great. And that's at thecolorfulkitchen.com. We'll have a link to that under the show notes at juicegrowradio.com so you can get your pre-ordered copy. i uh, really excited. Do you have a copy? Did they give you a pre-release yet? Or do you know what the book looks like? Uh, yes. Would you like to see it? Right yes, next of course we would. Yeah. And if you're listening so, on the radio, what we're looking good. at here is a beautiful bounded book. Oh, they did a nice job at Ben Bella on that one. I love the rainbow edge. I think that's such a special touch. Oh yeah, that is really neat. And so yeah. let's see. And it's full color inside too. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there's um, a photo for every recipe. And that was really a fun part for me because I love doing the photography. So, and you guys can get that recipe for, you know, in the pre-order. So that's worth it right there. And uh, gosh, that's a bit, how many recipes do you have in there? And how do you have it organized? Is it entrees, dinner? What do you have in there? Uh, absolutely. So there's a, there's a little bit over a hundred and it's very, I like to keep it very straightforward and simple. It's breakfast, soup, salad, appetizers, entrees, desserts, kitchen staples. It's all super straightforward. <laughs> So what led to it? What, where did you get to the point where like you started the blog, the colorful kitchen, you started doing this, what led to that decision and what led to this book? Right. So it's been many, many years in the making. So I mentioned that when I first started becoming interested in food and cooking and health, I was in college. And at the time I was at art school and I was studying textile design. So after I graduated college, I was pursuing a career in textiles and I had been, I taught weaving and I worked, I did sort of odd jobs. I did, I was a little league photographer for a brief amount of time. And then for a few years, I was working at a company designing rugs. And I, I got to this point where I started to feel like I loved my textile work, but but I felt like I was more passionate about food and cooking and health than I was about my design work. And so I started, I became a health coach. I started my blog and there were many steps in between, but long story short, I found that I was able to combine my love of design and art with my love of food and being able to take the photographs or the blog sort of satisfies that creative side um, did you yeah. do the photographs in the book too? I, yes, I did. Nice. Thanks. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. It's great to combine your passions and talents and, um, and really excited because your website's beautiful. So everyone should have a look at that too and grab some of those recipes down from there. So when you're talking about the, the recipe rainbow or the rainbows of recipes, how can we get more of that into our diet, you know, through the holidays and just on the day to day? Absolutely. So one of the easiest, most colorful foods I think you can start your day with, it would be a smoothie. And I know, as you know, that I love 
I love juice as well. I think those are smoothies and juice are a great way to just start your day off. Like, you know, check the box. Like I've got all of these nutrients in and I have a bunch of recipes on my blog and in the book for green smoothies. And I think that's just such a great way to really pump the nutrients in before you've done anything else in your day. Love it. And if you're watching live, you're here with us live, go ahead and type any questions you might have for Eileen right here into the box. And that's part of being uh, Juice Guru Rewind being part of the academy. And if we have some of our community on Facebook right now, and you guys feel free to type in the box below any questions you might have. Um, this is really exciting to have Eileen with us. So it's a great opportunity for you to get your questions answered. So, um, and if anything pops in there, I'll just, I'll get to it. But Eileen, what are your uh, plans? So the book's coming out. Um, what are your plans for the book and the future of the work that you're doing? Right. So I, I love to cook. <laughs> and I love to share my recipes and I want to continue to do, to do that. And whatever I can do to help more people get more plants onto their plate is sort of where I'm headed. And so I'm not entirely sure what next year holds. I'm working right now on getting through the next couple of weeks when the book comes out and it's really exciting to do all the press and the promotion around that and then i'm going to take a really long vacation and then i think i'm going to start cooking again and getting back into making recipes all the time very exciting so what was it about the um i didn't see it. i'm just checking facebook here and seeing any comments let me just refresh that page for our friends that are on facebook the, um, and i of course i get a little bit of a echo and that's okay we've got that out of the way again you're listening to eileen marino here on juice Girl radio the author of the colorful kitchen pre-orders available now you can get some bonus recipes with that too from her website at the colorful kitchen Dot com. So now I read on your blog that you're actually also gluten free. Is that right? Well, I'm, I'm not gluten, entirely gluten free anymore. I was gluten free for many years when I started eliminating things like eggs and dairy and all the preservatives and all of that gluten went along with it. And I found that it made me feel really good. But after a few years of staying away from gluten, I found that I've been able to add back in really high quality forms of gluten and I don't have any stomach issues. Um, for example, I prefer to use spelt flour over wheat flour. So in my book and on my website, you'll find like all of my cookies and the breads and whatnot use spelt, which is for those who don't know, it's a cousin of wheat and it's, it contains gluten, but a lower amount and it's higher in protein. And so I find that if I have a high quality sourdough bread, that's actually traditionally fermented, that seems to be easier on my stomach and I can handle that as opposed to say a box of packaged crackers made with wheat that might, you know, not, I might not do so well with that. And what about things like seitan, which is a wheat gluten? Do you do okay with things like that? Well, I, I find it to be, I do find that to be a little rough on my stomach, I think, because it's so heavy. If I'm at a vegan restaurant and they have a really cool seitan chicken and my husband orders that, I'll have a bite off his plate and try it. But that's, it normally can be a little bit too much if I have a whole dish with it. Yeah, you have some nice uh, vegan restaurants there in New York, like uh, I've been to Candle. It's a yeah. candle cafe, and is it Blossom, that other one, that really nice yes. one? Yes, Blossom's incredible. Candle Cafe is incredible. We're so lucky and so bright. If I'm at one of those places and someone I'm with orders something with seitan, I have to try it. <laughs> and also, what about sprouted breads? Because I know uh, people with gluten sensitivity sometimes do okay with sprouted. Have you tried that and had success? Yes, um, I like the Ezekiel brand, which is a sprouted bread that is you can find in the freezer section of most grocery stores. And I do, but I do well with that. I think it really comes down to how how the wheat is treated and prepared, and if it's pumped up with extra preservatives and things that aren't good for you, then it's a little bit of a different situation than something that's sprouted or fermented or sourdough, that type of thing. And with all this and, uh, you know, the busy schedule and everything, what do you find to do? What do you do on your spare time for fun? Well, I have a one-year-old daughter, so oh, <laughs> we go to the park me. a lot. Right. So we do, um, we go to the park as I said, we um, go to museums. We, my life is a little bit different than it was a year ago. Now it's mostly kid-friendly activities in my spare time. Uh-huh. And are you, is your husband vegan too or? 
he's he doesn't he's not vegan he eats mostly vegan um he, he would call himself a 90 percent vegan uh so he we are we all vegan at home but if we're out occasionally he'll order something that isn't vegan but for the most part he eats the way i do and how are you raising your daughter she she eats a lead at home which is vegan for now and i'm going to continue giving her vegan food and educating her on the reasons why I eat the way I eat. And then when she's old enough to understand, I'll let her make her own decisions. And I'll hope that she'll want to keep eating all the stuff that we've been eating. She likes everything so far. She's a very good eater. Well, maybe that's your next books, you know, on raising <laughs> vegan kids, getting some, some more plant foods into the diet, right? I love that idea. So anything else we didn't touch on? Any final words of advice you want to share with our audience? And once again, if you're listening on Facebook or part of the Juice Guru Rewind, Juice Guru Academy, type in your questions in the box. You can raise your hand if you want to come on video if you're behind backstage with us right now, and some of our friends are, and you can just type in the chat box, and I'm just going to type in there so you know where we are. I typed hello. That's where our friends backstage could type in their questions is being part of our Juice Guru Rewind, of course, you get that opportunity and you get to come on live video. And usually our friends don't want to come on live video, but that'll change one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're on Facebook, type in your questions below and, um, and we'll get to them. But any uh, final words of advice for those trying to eat more healthy, trying to reach those New Year's goals that are coming of, you know, finally getting into the shape we might want to get in? Any final words of advice? Sure. I, I think the biggest thing to remember is that you don't have to make all the changes at once. It can be really overwhelming to completely overhaul your diet. And I think the most effective way to make changes that'll be long lasting is to start really small. Start with one meal a day or two meals a day, or maybe you, uh, you don't put cheese on the salad and you add kale and you start adding in one thing that would be good for you. Starting with something so small that will make you feel good will make you want to make bigger changes and i think giving it time is really important and not to feel pressured to rush to wake up one day and eat completely differently and are the recipes we had a question on facebook are the recipes time consuming or is it something that you can whip up what about time and if you don't have a lot of time in the kitchen right most of the recipes in my book are not time consuming at all. And actually one of the things I really emphasize is batch cooking. So for example, you would make um, a lentil salad and you would have half of it for lunch one day and then you would save the rest and you would top it with avocado and make it a little bit differently and have it for lunch the next day. And I think that is the best way to save time. But overall, no, the recipes are not very time consuming except for a couple of um, a couple of things that are more like Sunday night dinners, like I have a gnocchi recipe and um, there's like a veggie burger recipe that does take a little bit more time, but those are marked in the book as the ones that take more time. We had another question here. What do you eat in a typical day? That's a great question. So uh, I eat a lot. So I'm, still, I'm nursing my daughter, which means that I'm hungry all the time. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm very active, so I, I eat a lot. So for breakfast, I'll usually have oatmeal, and I'll top that with coconut yogurt, banana, peanut butter, cacao nibs. I usually have a mid-morning snack, which might be a handful of almonds or something like that. And then for lunch, I love to have a macro bowl, which would be a big bowl with brown rice and roasted vegetables and uh, a healthy fat like avocado or tahini on top. And I always put sauerkraut on, on top of my macro bowls. And then in the afternoon, I might have another snack, which could be um, peanut butter on crackers, or maybe I would have an apple or a banana or something like that. And then dinner is really always different. Um, lately, we've been making a lot of pasta just because it's getting colder. And I found that my daughter really loves pasta. And there are a couple of really great bean pastas out there. There's a chickpea pasta that she really likes called bonza. So we've been making that a lot. And I'll make a cashew cheese sauce and I'll saute broccoli and asparagus and kale and put that in with some tempeh or tofu. And then I'll have dessert. I'm always making dessert. So I like to keep uh, a lot of raw desserts on hand because I find that they have less sugar and I, I can eat it and have one piece and I feel satisfied and I'm done. And I have a ton of raw dessert recipes on my website. I have like raw tahini fudge and raw chocolate 
cookies and I love to have something like that after dinner. Yum. Yum. Okay. <laughs> now that everyone's stomach's growling. Anything else, um, Eileen, anything else we didn't touch on during the interview? Any final things you wanted to share or do you think we're complete? I think we're complete. I would just <laughs> say that eating plant-based can be so much easier than people think it is. And I think people are usually surprised how much they like it. Well, you know, you're listening to Juice Guru Radio. You're getting your juices in. Why not start the new year the plant-based way? Eileen Marino, thank you so much for being here. Again, the website, thecolorfulkitchen.com. We'll have the link at Juice Guru Radio. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Congratulations on the book. And we'd love to have you on down the road. I'm sure there are more books coming. So keep us informed. Great. Thank you so much for having me. This is really fun. Thank you for being here. I'm Steve Prusak, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to go ahead and sign off. Everybody on Facebook, mwah, and everybody behind the scenes, mwah. And thank you for the questions. Eileen, thank you for being here. This was great. Great. Thank you so much. I can't wait to get a copy of the book. Uh, are they sending you one from Ben well, I, I better check in and make sure. Okay, I'll make sure that they send you one. Yeah, you let them know. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right, because I didn't get okay. the pre-copy, which I usually love to hold up. So, oh, okay. you know, but at least you had, I'm glad you had, it looked beautiful. Oh yeah. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. I'll send an email tomorrow and make sure that they sent you one. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.